I'm going to give you a quick rundown of using the gear script in Fusion. Uh, this little project is a um, Lego winch that we run as a skills task. Um, I'll talk about joining your work with um, motion links so um, everything will move together. Start by saving your work in, in an appropriate folder. I've called it gear test assembly because all the components are going to sit below that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into tools, um, add-ins, script and add-ins. Come down here to the spur gear and run. Nothing seemed to happen at first, but it's actually put this here. So I'm going to expand that one and bring it out so we can see it. Now, essentially, you're going to have to play around with these. Um, so a lot depends on, I guess, each other. So um, we're running a really small gear for this project. So um, I'm going to make module one, number of T20, backlash, um, leave it at zero. Root Philip. Um, I think we go to about 0.5 with this. We can adjust it in a minute if uh, it's wrong. Gear thickness. Um, I'm going to go with a 5mm thick gear. And the hole in the center, I want to have 5. You can leave that empty if you want to. Um, essentially, you can extrude the hole in, in the center later. Now, it says the uh, pitch diameter is going to be 20 millimeters. So um, everything seems to be pretty good, but have a play with the different settings and see what it outputs. I click OK, and that's essentially what I was expecting for this this project. Um, and you can see it's created a new component under well in the the browser or feature tree. So um, that's a separate component. Now, if you wanted to add this into an existing assembly, you can leave it at that point, and it's its own its own component. You'd probably want to come up here and um, name the overall assembly the spur gear with the teeth number in it. Or you can right click and from memory um, you can save this as um, its individual component. I'll have to look that up though. Um, we're going to build this into um, well, all our components under this one assembly within this file. So I'm going to continue and I'm going to do a um, small gear here too. So I'm going to run the script again. The beauty of running the script twice um, as like straight away, all your settings are set here already. So if I want to make this to um, a smaller gear, so I'm going to do an eight tooth gear. Um, it's only just going to fit. So my pitch diameter is eight and my hole is five. So it should work. It would be pretty marginal to 3D print that because you've got some very small sides. So I'm going to control Z and go back again and um, run the script again. I might make this a 10, 10 tooth gear instead. Essentially, it doesn't matter for our project. Um, I don't want to see a gear ratio coming up, but it's about learning how to put them in. Now, um, you can see my view is kind of a little bit odd. The last thing I was doing was rendering. So um, I like to come down here into display settings for the purpose of what we're doing. Um, and in camera, I'm going to set my view to orthogonal or orthographic, sorry. Um, orthographic is going to give me this really flat view um, with no perspective in it. So I can kind of mesh my gears together and see how they fit together nicely. Um, that's looking pretty good for the purpose of uh, showing you how to generate gears and add, add that um, motion link together. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the measure tool to measure what um, the size of my, uh, between my centers are. So I've got 15.7. I want to make the cradle um, for this to sit in, so we can just test the gears. So um, let's quickly uh, create a new part. So up here we want to add a new component. And I'm going to call the component um, test cradle. So you can see that's come down here now. And we're working on it because the activation kind of dot is selected. Um, we're going to go back to our sketching tools and um, capture position 
I'm going to draw this cradle here. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger than what I need. So um, 40 tab 25, enter. And I'm going to finish that sketch, extrude it. Doesn't really matter how far, it's 5mm back. And I'm just going to add a little base to that as well. So I won't cover these skills because everyone knows how to sketch so far. So 40 tab 5 in that direction. And finish sketch. Extrude. So um, it's going to depend what you're actually modeling your project for. Um, but for the sake of this Lego winch project, um, this will be enough to demonstrate on. Just realized that I've been modeling kind of from the top down. So what I'm going to do is select that top view, right click, set current view as front. And then I'm going to get my test cradle, right click, and I'm going to ground that in position. Uh, capture position. So now um, that's become my kind of locked in component and um, these keys will move around freely. So we're still at editing our test cradle. I'm going to move away the gears just to get them out of our way. We're going to draw a sketch on this kind of cradle here and we'll go and put two holes in. So I, I re sorry, I just can use a Construction line here. Oops, this center. Turn construction off. Um, we had a five mil hole in the center. So just two holes to start with. Um, so from the center to the center of the hole is uh, fifteen point seven. I'm going to go 15.5 for this one, and then um, we can center these ones um, on memory for the uh, measurements. It isn't going too well, but we'll just kind of visually center them slightly one way, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to extrude that. We've selected that profile too. A um, couple of extrusion methods here. We can do two or distance or all. Um, if you want to always go through all, um, it's, it's a good idea to select all. Then if we change the size of this later, um, it will continue to cut the, the holes the whole way through. All right, so now we're up to assembling the pieces together. So I'm going to select the uh, main assembly at the top here, and I'm going to drag my two um, gears. It doesn't have to be like super close, just somewhere near the mark, so um, it's easier to assemble them in a second. So just have a look from different views. That's close enough for now. And now it's about joining. So we're going to use the join feature, and if we go into motion and select revolute, we are going to, and then go back to position. And we're going to start selecting what we want to revolve. So um, I'm going to select the component first and then where I want to um, move that component to. Now, um, how to explain this? Um, we've got two surfaces, I guess, flush with each other. We want to flip that component so it's sitting on the outside. Now, you can see it's dragging on here. We can fix that later. Um, I'm going to do the same to my small gear, so um, join. We've already got the motion revolute selected, so back to position. What I should have done with the last one was turn the model and select from the inside. And we'll do that to that one, so they're both connected. Now we're going to spin the model and line up the gears, so they'll move independently, but we want to get them sitting as close. Um, once we've got that sorted, um, we're going to add our motion link. So I'm going to come in here, sorry, I clicked the wrong one, um, assemble and um, motion link. So this is where we join the two together. Make sure you do capture position for this time. Um, and we're asked to select the two joints so we, we can see them quite clearly. Um, they'll start spinning as a bit of a demo. Um, 
I'm going to put a formula in here in the angle section. So um, what we need to write in here is 360 times, um, and in brackets, you want this to happen first, um, your large gear size divided by your small gear size. This one's quite easy because it's just, um, yeah, uh, 20 over 10. So it's running half the speed of the large gear. Um, if you had a 8 tooth gear and a 32, um, same formula. When I click down to the next one, um, it should update. Um, and it looks like it's going, uh, they're both going in the same direction at the moment. We want to change this gear to spin the opposite way. So we're going to just put a negative in there. And they're spinning really quickly, but you can see that it's kind of working. So we'll click OK. And um, if I spin my model around and click a gear, you can see they are, they're all linked together. So that's the quick overview about creating gears in Fusion and also um, putting that motion link and joints in position. With the problem with it dragging here, that's kind of not really the point of the video, but I'm going to go back into the uh, bullet point there to make sure I'm editing the, the cradle. And down the bottom here, to move the screen a little bit, um, I'm going to edit where I put this um, right at the start actually, this one here. And I'm going to make this one bring it up 10 mil. And um, I can essentially go back in and change this uh, hole size. Now I know where the, uh, the pieces are here too. Maybe bring it across to this way to center the way the gears a little bit better. Um, that's, yeah, a bit bothered. Um, not really the point of the video, but um, when you're going to go back here, click. Uh, the main assembly so we can try the gears again. So I could go ahead and add a handle on the small gear, um, a little spindle on the, the large gear um, to wind up the cord or it uh, doesn't matter whatever your purpose of your gearing is. Um, so good luck creating that motion link.